how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Hey, everybody. We're in the new year now. Oh, my God. It's already 2023. Kevin, when did you start? 2019. Yeah. Yeah, we're on a year, like, full-on year... Five, five, what? Five? What the hell did that happen? Are we stopping? No, hell no, man. This year is going to be even bigger than last year. So let's just keep it rolling. And we're going to start it out with a podcast that is, oh my good God. It is deep. It is fun. It is funny. I mean, we just go into so many random different things all around the same song though, but it all kind of just flows like we're going to talk about the song. We're going to go a little bit of a tangent. We're going to come back tangent, come back tangent. But that's usually what we do here. But it's all fun, and you're not going to want to miss out on any of it. Before we jump in, though, I want to thank our sponsor for the podcast, which is Phoenix Fitness or FNX Fitness, if you want, everyone would call it. So you guys know me. I absolutely love going to concerts. That's like my favorite thing to do. I mean, festival lines getting out, I'm like, ooh. And it's like, you know, that's like for festivals, that's four days worth of moshing for me. Yeah, I'm a mosher. Like, I'll go into those pits like crazy. I will not jump out of those pits for the life of me if I if I can help it. I mean, to make sure I do that though, I gotta make sure I'm mosh pit fit, yo. So what do I do? I go to the gym a good amount of time. I lift a lot. I'll do a lot of cardio. I mean, that's six days a week right there. And then that seventh day when you're supposed to rest, what am I gonna do? I'm still gonna go to the gym, but I'm gonna go sit in the sauna and absolutely relax because let my body just. Whoa. But during those workouts, so you know, I got to make sure that I'm preparing right and recovering right to make sure that my body is performing at its most optimal and to make sure that I'm mosh pit fit. Or for all of you out there, if you're trying to get mosh pit fit, this is the perfect way to make sure that you are gaining towards that goal as well. And FNX Fitness is going to be the place for you to go and make sure you get all that support to help achieve your fitness goals. They have many different products, many different supplements, many different types of protein, whey protein, Collagen protein, plant-based protein for you to help build your muscle efforts. I use that stuff from FNX Fitness. They have different pre-workouts, both stim and stim-free. I use their stim-free stuff because I've got more than enough energy as it is. I don't need any extra caffeine. They have different b cell recovery compounds, multivitamins. I mean, anything you need to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness will have for you. Our listeners get 20% off using the code CPP20 at checkout at FNXFitness.com. Link in the description of the podcast. So go check out Thank You Phoenix Fitness. Now to our feature presentation. We have the band In Fear from the United Kingdom here with us today. Now, they have released a brand new song called Abyss, which I honestly thought it was about one thing. What they told me what the song was actually about, though. I mean, that was pretty close, but I never, ever would have guessed it. We go deep into that. We also talk about how they found their recent lead singer, how both their members, Ryan and Ben, their guitars, met hate it which is just both those stories are just ridiculous we talk about different tour lineups we talk about touring different festival lineups how different bands from different genres are going on different tours and it's working the scare copyright scare that the band had which is preventing you from getting an in fear weed whacker and so much more for you to get into in fear this new metal metalcore deathcore hardcore they have their own sound band. Are you guys ready? Because it's a great podcast to start out your new year with. Yeah, you ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. Do you like metal music? Because, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, there's a very, very, very strong chance you do. But what about a band that can combine New metal, metalcore, deathcore, kind of all in their style, play around with it, and come up with some absolutely crazy stuff. Well, yeah, you would like something like that, wouldn't you? Well, this is where you come for, and this is where you're going to get it. This band recently signed to You're the Rat Records to close out 2022 and release their most recent song, Abyss, which you can go listen to right now. So why don't we just get to know the band and have a good time? So please, please welcome all the way from the United Kingdom, Ryan and Ben from the band In Fear. So gentlemen, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. What's oh, up, mate? It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for having us, man. It is great to have you guys here. How has everything been going on your end, especially, you know, end of, end of the year? You guys seem like you had a pretty big, you know, end of the year with a sign to a new label, releasing a new song. So just how has everything been on your end? Yeah, man. It's been insane, honestly. It's just been crazy. I don't know, Ben. You you talk about it, but it's, it's been <laughs> so good. You're just getting shy. You're just like, I don't want to talk about this, this thing that I'm really proud of. <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> I just I just talk forever. So I'm yeah, I'll let you go, honestly. No, it's it's been really good. It's um I what we're on day uh five of of releasing Abyss. 
or something. And uh, this has been a long time coming. We've we've been working on this track since oh, I want to say early 2018. So yeah, the fact that it's out now, the, the amount of love and uh, it's getting like it's getting picked up by Kerrang and stuff like that, which is like a new new kind of level for us. So it's really nice to be experiencing that from uh, all the yeah. hard work we put in. Definitely. Yeah, and on my side, like, I just can't believe that the music's finally out. And we'll probably talk <laughs> about this this a lot when, you know, we dive into stuff on, like, the podcast and whatnot. But we've been working on that music for a couple of years. Um, not just Abyss, but other music that we want to release soon as well. Um, and it, you Spoilers. know, it's been, been a few, yeah, it's been, <laughs> been a few years. So, honestly, to have it out is incredible. And uh, like Ben said, the the reception it's had from like all the comments and feedback we've had from um, listeners and people checking it out, whether it's new or friends or you know whoever it is, but also um, getting you know some really big publications and stuff, you know, saying go and listen to this band, this music's sick, is just absolutely nuts. Like I can't can't believe it. <laughs> it's just it's, it's a bit yeah. it's a bit reassuring as well. Like <clears throat> even outside of um because obviously every band wants to reach as many new less uh new listeners as possible. But just like in the close knit community we've got here around our around our home, when we released Abyss and it got uh picked up I think it was Saturday by Metal Hammer and it got put in the top top songs of the week or something like that, that just seeing it, yeah, all, yeah. Our, all of our friends coming together all of them sharing it like watching that that go up it was just so it's validating isn't it you, you just yeah. go all the people around me care about this as well like may, maybe not as much as us but they, they also care about it and support it and it's it's really um yeah it's, it's really like wholesome <laughs> it's very wholesome i agree wholesome. but yeah like you said like <clears throat> that was one thing that was crazy was you know metal hammer being like oh this is one of our top songs this week and we were right next to like you know other bands that we grew up listening to and stuff like that it was just mental you know and only the previous week was metallica and it was like <laughs> oh my days we're on this list oh. that's like you know what i mean imagine if we were on the same one as metallica though dude that would have been incredible oh, yeah <laughs> but still i'm like i'm mad mad impressed by the whole thing and yeah to get such kind words from some of those publications as well like metal hammer said some amazing stuff about the track which i i'm just blown away by to be honest with you you know you don't expect it especially when um you're just starting out in your music career you know whatever you want to call it and uh you've been writing riffs and songs with your mates for a long time you've been grinding you've been working really hard but you don't know what that reception is going to be like from some of these music critics or, you know, publications that are respected in the industry. And to get that feedback is really validating, like Ben said. Yeah, really validating. So you awesome. get desensitized to it, don't you? You, you yeah. get desensitized to your song because obviously, you know, you've been working on it day and night for the last, in our case, four years. <laughs> that um, when it when it gets to like the week before release, you just sort of sit there and you go, is this actually any good? I can't yeah. tell anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah, when, when when you get a reaction like that, you go, oh, wait, yeah, it is. It is. I've just listened too much. <laughs> to, to, to elaborate on that um, a little bit, um, we self-produced most of the stuff on like this song and uh, on, our, on some of the upcoming stuff as well. Um, and, you know, there was multiple guys involved in it, but I did a lot of the... Um, sort of the laborious like editing work and things like that so my ears got so desensitized to the music you know it was like you know i kind of just almost hated the, <laughs> the songs before they came out and then they finally it's, released you know it's and when I was we like, finished tracking <laughs> it's when we finished track no no after you finished editing sorry so we just spent like fucking what six months trying to edit I'm not going to I'm not going to continue that cuz that might give away a bit too much. <laughs> but um what we were working on uh and then just to go into the studio and George to bosh out the final mixes in like two goes in half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> just mad, <isn't> <laughs> just yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Love but on a, yeah. George. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh -oh. But yeah, like honestly just to summarize I think it's really validating and uh to end the year with that and the signing announcement, you know, incredible. And to be working with um, with James, you know, at Year of the Rat is is awesome to us. I mean, 
we've been talking to him for a while about um, potentially being on the label and all that kind of stuff. And um, to finally be part of that is really, really awesome and have that backing as well feels exactly the same as like we've said already, but it's just really validating to to have that, I think. Shoot, just to take in that whole entire story and really want to dive deep into it right now, I should have had like a shot of tequila right here. Like, oh my God, all right, let's do this. Let's go. Because, I mean, you're talking about this song where you're saying it's been, you've been working on this since 2018. That's four years. I know you guys released your debut EP in 2019. So I'm like, yeah. how, Jesus Christ, how, how much you guys been able to work on this song? Then you're talking about, you know, you've been tracking it, editing it like crazy. And then you bring it to, you got a mix and in two goes in a half hour, boom, it's already where it needs to be. You're just like, why couldn't it happen well, like that as quickly as possible, you know? <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, there's a, a big long story. story. We, there's we a big old story. To go into. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm all about stories here. So whatever stories you guys want to tell around this, I mean, I, I should have had popcorn too for this. And be oh, like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, but sure. I'm ready. So if you guys got the story of why it took so long and on top of yeah. that, Getting it yeah. mixed are you ready? Like, are you ready for perfect. story time? We're gonna I, I'm do ready. Let's you know, do story I'm, time. I'm gonna buckle myself in and just strap and be like, "Let's go!" Alrighty. <laughs> go for it, Ben. You start, bro. Oh, go on then. So I, I don't know how much, um, how well your listeners will know us, uh, but we. So as you just said, we released our debut EP in 2019, uh, and then since that point, we released two singles. Yeah, two singles with our previous vocalist, changed vocalist, released another single, and now we're on Abyss. Um, so Abyss being written before our first EP dropped actually predates what two of our members <laughs> being in the band. Uh, yeah, so so quite some time ago. But once we had written that after the EP, um, we had decided that this was this was the direction we wanted to go in. And that, compared to the EP, were like polar opposites. You had the EP that was very just straight-cut metalcore, and then this that's more, you know, new metal meets hardcore, I guess, um, something like that. So everything we've released from the EP up to this point has only served the purpose of making us sound more like Abyss in gradual steps. Oh. Um, that's how kind of important this one song is to, to us. Like this made us certain that In Fear was going to be a thing. We just had to get there. Yeah. It's a really, and... really good way of explaining it, actually, because we, we've we've known about this song for a long time. And when it was written... um. We knew that what we had was well. We were very confident about the song. Like we really liked the song, and um, it was something. It it had some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of essence to it that breathed something different to us um, compared to what we'd done previously. For example, I'm not saying that it's it's compared to everything out there, but you know, for us, it was a big step forward. So we were really really confident in this track. And um, like Ben said, we went through quite a lot in that period because. We had uh, member changes and stuff. Um, you know, mainly the mainly our frontman change was the big big thing, and um, and during that period where we had a frontman change, we were trying to write new music, um, and we were really sort of focused on moving the band forward and keeping on writing and getting loads of material together. Um, but unfortunately, it kind of got halted by this member change. And um, it wasn't, you know, I don't think it was anywhere near as bad as it could have been because I've seen bands stop for really long periods of time while they wait for the right singer or vocalist to come along. I think we were probably without one for only a few months, so we were quite lucky. Um, But Mm. once we had somebody on board, it was then like, right, we got to gel with them, we got to teach them the music, we got to try and write with them. You know, there's loads of stuff behind that that goes on that perhaps listeners don't necessarily see um so there's a lot of work behind the scenes on that um on our part and in getting um hayden our current vocalist um ready to record new music and you know help write the new material in terms of vocals and stuff so um and then in between that let's not forget there was a global pandemic so (laughs) you know huge huge halt to a lot of things um so we had a lot going on during that period but effectively uh to, to summarize really We've ended up in a position where um, we signed with the label 
And then it was the right time for us to finally drop <clears throat> a bit. Um, and yeah, we couldn't be prouder of it. And the time that it's taken behind that obviously is, is, you know, a long time, but I think it's for the right reasons. And we spent, we had a lot of time to reflect on the song and make it right, you know? Um, and I think it's come out as good as it could have done, really. I'm really, really stoked on it. Um, but that's kind of like the summary of why, you know, we wrote it in 2018. We we work with um, a producer called George Lever that some people might be familiar with. He's done uh, work with Loathe, Thornhill, Monuments, bands like that um, <clears throat> a bit more recently. Um, and it was one that, you know, we sat in his studio with a demo and it was like a collaborative songwriting session, pre-production. Um, and that was where the ideas for this song came about all the way back then. So, yeah, it's just a crazy journey that this song's been on, really, to be honest with you. I don't know if you've got anything else to add, Ben. Well, yeah, you caught me off guard there. Um... <laughs> no, I just uh... wondered. Well, I suppose the only, the only other really interesting thing is that that, that song was, uh, it was a demo that you originally wrote, wasn't it? Yeah, was it was it, just like, yeah, yeah. it was like a one and a half minute, two minute demo of like riffs and <laughs> various things. <laughs> and we, and we basically went into George, uh, went into George for a pre-production session and we, we, we took this demo to him and we were like, it's good, but it's not, it's not quite there. Like it hasn't got a character to it. So we just spent like an entire weekend going through different ideas and trying to find a find a sound that really stood out to us. And I think there were like is it two riffs that ended up staying from the original demo? And we ended yeah, up rewriting was... everything like in that weekend, all yeah, sat in the studio. Yeah. Right. So, which is really weird to think about it, because you say like, you know, we wrote it in 2018. We literally wrote it in two days like something like that it, was, it must have been about two days um and, it, and the rest of the time has just been uh d just trying to record it trying to get the the rest of the character around the main instruments sounding right yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's really hard to recall stuff that happened that long ago yeah now, you're making a good point about actually. it it was so long so long uh, ago it was funny actually i i went back on my um my instagram stories archive the other day after abyss came out and i found the stories when we were in the studio writing the song and i looked at like the, the date stamp and it was just so old I was like, oh man, crazy but it was really cool because you could see like you know that session and how it ran and stuff and i tagged george in it and i was like hey check this out and he was like oh my days <laughs> <laughs> was it really that long ago? <laughs> um, so yeah, but like Ben said, you know, it started with um some riffs uh from a demo uh, that I put together, and then something that George is brilliant at um as a producer is like you know he he stripped that down to the bare bones of what was good and took out all the rest of it that was not needed, um and then together between all of us collaboratively the song was rebuilt. George did a lot of that legwork to begin with. And then there was a little bit more input around, um, like Ben said, what kind of sound we wanted. And um, something that I think, again, he's really good at is sort of discussing with the group as to what it is we want to sound like. But based off of like, OK, what's not being done? How do we do something different and how do we think outside the box? And that's something that as a group, we and a band, we've um, talked a lot about. So when when we work on music at the moment, we're constantly trying to think about new ways of approaching it because I think although metalcore is a cool genre and uh, you know I grew up listening to it and I love it, um, I don't want to be another metalcore band. I want to be something different. So and the guys, as far as you know, I'm concerned, feel the same way, um, yeah. and that's why I love being in this band and working with these guys. So. But that's the backstory for Abyss, which obviously is long. But yeah, that's the backstory. <laughs> yeah, but if it's going to be a song that took you guys four years from initial conception to release, hell yeah, there's going to be quite a backstory to it. One thing that did stand out to me in particular around this was when, uh, Ben, when you were talking about how just kind of how the whole entire thing came together. And then, Ryan, when you were talking about just 
you guys kind of like, you know, playing metalcore, that's kind of the style of it. And then this song really being that first, you know, one to combine more of that new metal, deathcore, hardcore kind of feel in the along with metalcore as well in there because I did pick up on that. <laughs> and kind of just then continuing on, you know, the demo had a minute and a half and like only one or two, one or two riffs ended up surviving and everything else got reworked in it. It's like this Frankenstein monster of a song that ended up coming together. But with you guys releasing it at this time to really say, okay, we went down this road. Everything leading up to Abyss is showing you what we could potentially be. And now here is Abyss showing what we can, what we basically are and what we can be. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the Bad Omens arc as well because... If you take a look at their initial album, their self-titled album from uh, 2016, yeah, it's, it's, it has their style to it, but it's definitely a lot heavier. It's a little bit more formulaic at times. You go to their second album, uh, Finding God Before God Finds Me, you're starting to see some more of those shades of what they were going to do on Death of Peace Mind, which is what they really wanted to go for. And then all of a sudden, boom, February 2022 hits, <laughs> Death of Peace of Mind comes out. Now Bad Omen is one of the fucking biggest bands in the world. And kind of just using that on that similar arc scene where you guys have gone with Abyss, now in more of a singular song setting, everything has been breadcrumbs leading up to what your sound can actually be. Now with Abyss, we have a taste of what that sound can be, where you guys can go with it, and seeing people really pick up on that and seeing the validation of it. Man, those four years, yeah, they might have been pretty laborious. They might have been pretty <laughs> ridiculous, but you're seeing the payoff literally from the moment you released it. Even if at some point you were like, oh my God, is, is this song even good anymore? Because you just got so exhausted on it from <laughs> working on it for four plus years. You, your ears are just so accustomed <laughs> to it. You don't even realize how good it is anymore until you release it. And then people are loving it. Mel Hammer's like, fuck it. This is one of the songs of the week. Listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you said about, and thank you, man. That was really, really good yeah. about um, Bad Omens because they're absolutely popping off at the moment. They're so massive. And um, they're a cool band, really cool band. Um, but I think there's a lot of bands uh, out there. I'm sure we can all think of many more that have been on this kind of journey where they've like changed sound and stuff. You know, as much as I, I don't really like the newer Parkway stuff, Parkway Drive. It's like you know, for some people, that's 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 what they love, the newer mm -hmm. stuff. And for Parkway Drive, the band, that's been their success. So. You know, for them, they've been on that kind of arc as well, you know, where they started in metalcore and perhaps it's a little bit more, you know, what we would call nowadays a bit more, form, not formulaic, but generic. Back then it was quite new, but nowadays it feels a little bit generic because it's a bit older. Mm -hmm. And then they've been through that change phase and they've landed on their sound and it's been successful for them. So, I mean, I'd love to say, and I'd hope, you know, fingers crossed that the same happens for us. Um, But at the moment, we've just had amazing support from people Mate, and, you want um, me to write dad rock? Get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're gonna write. We're gonna write some dad rock, bro. Yeah, um, but no, I hope we don't write dad rock. That's not us. <laughs> that's, that's not. Sh that's not shade on Parkway. I'm just trying to. I was making a joke. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean it was. Yeah, Winston, I don't, if you're listening, we love you. Right? <laughs> don't need to get mobbed. <laughs> <laughs> well, like even thinking about it as well, you can kind of use Architects in a similar example with their past two oh, albums yes. having a little bit more of that, it's a little bit more of, you know, some more of these popular elements, some more of the generic sounds to where a lot like myself, I'm not as into their two newer albums as I was in a like, holy hell, when it came out in 2018, that album just blew my freaking mind. Oh, I'm like, yeah, you know, the other th the two afterwards, I'm like, hey, you know, like I get it. But then also seeing the success they're having off it, it's, I, I mean, I can't blame them for going that route. And it's just something where, you know, as time goes on, bands end up changing their sound. I'm not going to say change their sound, but their sound evolves to reflect on what they really connect with, what they're interested in, what point in time they are in it life. Because maybe sometimes playing something that's super duper heavy, super duper fast and, you know, screaming about, I don't even know what the hell you might be wanting to scream about. Maybe it's something about, you know. A, t a time where you were absolutely struggling in life and you thought it wasn't worth, worth living anymore. Maybe at this point in time, maybe 10 years down the road, now you have a family, you're a dad and you absolutely love life. So now your mentality yeah. is going to be different. So the songs are going to evolve to kind of fit more of that mindset, fit more of that ideal. And that's just life. That's just what happens. And I always look at it this way. If, if you like a band's new sound, fuck yeah, go with it. If you like it, listen to it. If it makes you happy, why not? If a new, band's new sound doesn't make you happy, but you like the old stuff, 
Well, that's okay. Their old yeah, stuff is sure. still there for you to <laughs> yeah. listen to. Exactly. I think especially, exactly. I think especially when it comes to architects. Um, obviously, yeah, you got a lot of people hating on the new stuff, the, the last couple albums. Uh, you just go, well, one, yeah, the old architect still exists. Go listen to that. And two, they were the pinnacle of metalcore for like, what, five, six years? Yeah. In, in the UK scene, anyway. Every band was trying to rip off the architect's sound. Oh, so mate, that means you've massive. got like, yeah, yeah. yeah you've got like 5,000 bands that are doing the set, that are doing their old style. Go listen to them. They'll appreciate yeah. your support. As it's well. like, um, <laughs> and, and, um, you know, it's like people that say the same about, which is crazy because it's not quite the same, but you know, North Lane's album Singularity versus um, the newer stuff with Marcus, you know, like Alien and Obsidian and stuff like that. And um, people are like, well, you can just go and listen to Singularity. But like Ben said, <laughs> there's like a hundred other bands now yeah. that are doing Singularity here in North Lane. And they're doing it quite well. And it's like, you know, if you want to go and listen to it, you you can either listen to the old albums or you can go and find new bands and support new bands that are doing that thing, you know? Like, I, I yeah, I failed to understand it personally. Um, Absolutely. I'm, that, I'm, I'm actually that. glad you guys brought that point too. There are plenty of other bands out there that are more than deserving of your support that if you want to have that sound of like, you know, North Lane Singularity, if you want to have that sound again of Architects, holy hell, if you, that, you know, everyone was trying to rip off the Doomsday riff in 2018 and 2019. <laughs> if, if you want something that sounds like, you know, Sepaternal, Bring Me the Horizon, if you want something that sounds like Bad Omen's first album, there are plenty of bands out there that have been in, that are influenced by that that are growing right now. So why not go check them out? Why not go listen to them? Why not go give them your support? Because those bands that are going to be that are going to be younger that maybe that you're looking for that sound maybe you're going to end up growing with those bands maybe those bands are going to become the next biggest bands in the scene and maybe you know that's going to be the thing that pushes the scene forward and continue everything on because i mean yeah you people still you know you take a look at like the festivals when they drop their headliners like there was a, one in the u.s that literally the day we record this drop their uh their uh lineup and the headliners are like slipknot avenge sevenfold pantera and tool it's like <laughs> okay cool but um haven't all those bands been like prominent for more than 20 years at this point which i get <laughs> yeah. but you know maybe throw me in like you know bring me the horizon maybe throw in like hell with bad omens trajectory throw in them it's yeah, like a fucking sure, See, people would yeah. show this up is for what's... that See, this is what's happening in the UK at the minute because um, I mean, in the UK we don't have many massive metal festivals uh, just because obviously we're a small island. Mm -hmm. uh, we have maybe, I want to say four, four probably. Um, biggest being Download, which yeah. I'm sure you know, you know all about. Um, and then this year they're doing like a special 10-year, no, 20-year anniversary, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah something um, like that. Yes, yeah, so they've added an extra day, and for the first time ever, they've got well, a first time in the last few years, they've actually got a brand new headliner in. They've got Bring Me headlining. I think it's the Friday, but like that for a for a festival that's so stuck around the same eight to ten acts like Metallica, Mega, uh, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Slipknot. Like for them to add someone new into the mix, that's like that's massive. I'm really happy that's happening. Like, even if you don't like Bring Me that much, you can appreciate yeah. the importance uh, it's, that it's cool. It is really cool. And <coughs> to talk about upcoming bands and successes and stuff like that, we're on the smaller scene, and I'm not saying tiny, but on the, on the smaller size of the scene, um, we're seeing more bands that perhaps we were we were playing with when we started out as a band now headlining you know like some of these mid-tier festivals and stuff like that in terms of their size so i think it's it's only inevitable that we're going to see some of these bands soon headlining things like download or big festivals and that's really cool and i think festivals or people that or anyone that's listening that is involved in that stuff like i think if you take a chance on some of these bands and give them these opportunities then that's fantastic that's the only way you'll push things forward especially with um uh you know changing the way that the scene operates and like people listening people's listening habits you know what they're going to check out and what they're going to support if they want to get them to support these acts then they need to give them the opportunities so yeah yeah because you, really cool. you can only go to a festival and see metallica and iron maiden and you know slipknot only enough times and <laughs> i like i get it they pull people in 
But then it's also like a sustainability thing. You take a look at, I've had this conversation with other people before. You take a look at other festivals, not within rock and metal, but you look at especially like pop and hip hop festivals, especially here in the U.S. Their main headliners, their big acts are people that are really popular now, not people that were like at their height 20, 30 years ago. It's people that are really popular now. And it's just continuing to grow the scene, their scene even more and more. And with rock and metal, with some of these festivals, look at the headliners, it seems like they're kind of stuck in this like, oh, you need to absolutely prove yourself to the upteenth degree <laughs> in order to get there. Seeing Bring Me being able to headline download, it's, yeah, I get it where it's kind of like on both ends where, you know, Bring Me's been around for a little bit, but Bring Me's also one of the biggest bands in rock and metal today. It's so massive. now it makes yeah, sense to so have huge. them. It, it makes sense to have them as a headliner on that, like on download. It, it just makes the most amount of sense and then being able to bring more people into it, being able to actually support some of these up and coming acts where yes, the ones that we've listened to and love for 20, 30 years, they, we still like to see them. We still like to have them, you know, come around, but we don't want to see them every single year. Yeah, exactly. And then it, it needs also, to be spaced allows, out, yeah, doesn't it? it also allows then bands like, you know, upcoming bands, bands like in fear to start taking some of these, you know, these earlier in the day spots and people that are going to be into these bands, like bring me the horizon are able to come check you guys out. And all of a sudden now there's a whole nother big melting pot of people that are here for you to really get a chance to listen to your sound and be like, Oh shit. I want to listen to some more of that when we're done <laughs> or Oh shit. I'm going to go buy some fucking merch or Oh shit. I hope they're at the merch tent afterwards. So I can be like, hi. <laughs> and then just, I mean, that's yeah. that. <laughs> That's something actually is that, um, yeah, people, a lot of fans are good at this, but yeah, do buy band merch. Like, make sure you support bands. Um, <laughs> we, it's their main really source deep. of income. <laughs> and uh, what we're talking about, we're we really big going merch. on someone else's <laughs> podcast plugging merch. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy our merch uh, in fear.co.uk. So, yeah, but honestly, support, support bands and buy merch, not just ours, but it would help. So, thank you. Um, but to, to talk quickly about, um, about Abyss, actually, something that you reminded me of when we were talking just now was, um, was about lyrics. So I don't know why it popped into my head, but the, the meaning of the song isn't something that we've talked much about so far in, in interviews and things very much. Um, but it's quite an interesting topic of conversation because, um, the meaning of Abyss was, uh, was to do with um sleep paralysis so um some some of the guys in the band were experiencing issues with sleep paralysis and um I, for those of people that haven't experienced it then you know you're very fortunate because it's, <laughs> it's a horrible thing um but effectively the feeling of sleep paralysis and sort of like the terror of sleep paralysis and some of the hallucinations and things that go on during that that um, particular thing well, what inspired the lyrics for the song? Um, so when we were when we were writing the lyrics, um, we were trying to think about how can we how can we sort of make it like um, you know someone's waking up in sort of like an endless pit, you know, like an abyss sort of thing, and that was what ended up being the uh, title for the song and and what inspired all the lyrics. Really, um, it was a really really cool concept so when we were writing it i really really enjoyed uh the the process of like writing some of the lyrics in there for that song um but yeah it's really really cool i don't know whether you've got anything else to add to that ben i mean you've pretty much covered it like it was yeah it was, it was written about sleep paralysis there were a few um you know instances that were actually based on people's uh dreams and whatnot um I, th I think most of that was written in one go wasn't it most of the lyrics yeah yeah there we, was a few little tweaks but yeah uh, most i of it was... i actually I, I do quite a lot well i did quite a lot of the um lyrical write uh lyrics for like our future music um but this is one of the few that i actually i didn't do much at all i think i had input on the chorus and that was that that was about it really yeah it was one where we we reworked the chorus um mm. into what it is now um based on probably more around hayden um because he was the new addition to the band and the singing aspect was something that we hadn't explored much with our previous vocalist so 
um when we when it came to the chorus we revisited the lyrics and the patterns and the melody and stuff like that um but originally me and ben actually sat and demoed that <laughs> and these yeah. are ideas that ben sort of came up with really um oh wait chorus, i remember i was so. driving just driving to your house just had the song just on repeat in my car as i was going over there yeah. and then i literally like got in i think this was day two of doing like box demos yeah, I literally got in the house, went straight upstairs, and I was just like, put it on the Abyss chorus right now, and just started <laughs> breathing away. <laughs> I remember Ryan looking over to me, he's like, you're proper getting into that. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but it, it, I'm glad, though, because that chorus, I think, is really cool. Um, what we ended up with was was quite a dreamy <laughs> sort of chorus idea. Because for when people do check out the song just to describe it the rest of the song is just absolute carnage it's like pure chaos mm -hmm. it's like so aggressive and fast and like it's almost slipknot like in places for some of the riffs um but like modernized a bit and not not so much like their old style if you know what i mean um so it's quite heavy and then it gets to the chorus and it's like it's suddenly slow and like open and then you've got this really dreamy vocal that comes in with uh sort of like a vocal slide that goes on with the melody and stuff so um yeah it's really really cool and and that's something that uh we came up with and, and you know ben contributed massively to on that um very very to, very cool section that was all to sort of achieve uh it was, it was to achieve a certain feeling like um so you've got your fast paced verse coming up you've got the um it's not chuggy but the you know the genty bit the da 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 leading all up you want to feel like everything around you is just closing in and closing in and closing in and it's on you and it's pressing in and it's pressing in and the chorus hits and it just opens up like everything just scatters and goes into this sort of almost space where time's just stopped while you're looking at everything um that's kind of the the whole goal of that section and yeah Fucking hell, I think we did that really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really soaked about it. But the, it's, it's the, really the, nice. The song structure, like, and we, to be honest, some of this is by accident. But the song structure does kind of reflect again the the sleep paralysis aspect that we were talking about. And like Ben said, you know, the fact that it kind of builds in pressure and then and then releases on the chorus, and it almost feels like you're in it, you're back into a dream, and it's no longer too scary, and you know whatever. But then when it suddenly hits again with the heavy part, you're like back into that horrific nightmare with the lyrics coming in and the vocals getting super aggressive and stuff so, like that. So yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, but that was just a bit, I wanted to to talk a, or dive into that a little bit uh, and explore it. Cause it's not something we've covered too much uh, with like, so, you know, things like this. So I thought it'd be cool to, to touch on. I'm, I'm glad you did because I never, ever would have guessed that this song was inspired by the concept of sleep paralysis for a number of reasons. One, I've never had to experience that myself. So always when we come when it comes to music, I have talked about this a good amount of times as well. Whenever we relate to the meaning of it, it's we're never going to have the exact same relationship that meaning based off what we've gone through in our life. So like that concept, like it just never entered my mind when looking through this song to try and figure it out, try and get an understanding of it try and get the uh understanding behind like where you guys are going with it because the mean also drives a lot of the emotion from those instrumentals from those vocals from the transition from verse to pre-chorus pre-chorus to chorus all that kind of stuff to really drive all that emotion all that journey all that response because i mean it, i've never even i've heard of anybody even create a song yet from this podcast talking about sleep paralysis so this is even a first for me which i'm like holy shit like when you said it, I kind of just lit up a little bit. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I've ever heard this. <laughs> yeah. Because when I was listening to it and I was going over it, how I related to it was for myself is I thought it was like about like a mental destruction, not only caused by yourself, but one that has a lot of influence from those around you and the situations that keep, that they bring to you. Over the course of time, when circumstances keep coming our way that cause us to question ourselves, feel trapped and stay trapped by those around us and our allowance of that influence of that, we feel like that abyss of torment is essentially our home. This song is all about kind of like oh. trying to break from that cycle that you're so used to and to find a way to find a new home. Not the same home you know that has been mentally destroying you over the, again and again, but something new that's going to be a lot more therapeutic and helpful for yourself. 
Right, wow. I, hang on a second. Let me just get my phone out. Can you say all of that again? Just going to it up for the next press release. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'll just send you what I wrote in because it's, yeah. it's all written down. I'll, I'll just send it to you guys and we'll call it yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really sick, though. I mean, um, a lot of the time when we're doing lyrics and that, we do have very, very specific um, circumstances or feelings in mind. Um but we're not overly concerned if they come across that way, as long as somebody can listen to it and figure out their own yeah, relation sure. to the yeah, song. Absolutely. Then absolutely. That's great. Like, like, you know, I know that the lyrics in this particular song are quite direct. So now that I've said and we've talked about the fact that it's sleep paralysis, when people read the lyrics, they'll go, Oh yeah, you know, it's really obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, you know, if you don't know that, then that we sort of deliberately leave them interpretive. Do you know what I mean? Um, because, you know, that's what, in my opinion, makes good songwriting is that if you're going to write a song, people need to be able to find something in the song that they can relate to. That's what makes music music. You know, that's why people love it. So that's why, why most love songs don't have the name of the person the artist loves in it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, so, oh, I'm probably not going to relate to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, what you said, and your interpretation was amazing because, hmm. you know, it's actually not far. Although it's not saying that, you know, it's about sleep paralysis. The situation she described, like when you use the words trapped and the fact that, you know, there was this terror and things like that. It's that that kind of feeling that we were trying to get across, even without the subject matter, you know, still landed. And, and you know, the listeners probably taking that away. So that's really reassuring and really cool, actually. Really cool. Which is why I'm glad you guys told me what the like meaning was behind it. Now, like, I'm glad I got to listen to the song and really go into it deep beforehand because now I'm making all these weird connections like, what the actual hell? But then when it comes to just the construction around everything and just the way that the instrumentals are put together, like you were talking about, just the the, the crazier, more fast-paced, modernized slip nerve with... Honestly, vocals that make me remind me of like a heavier Ryan Kirby fit for a king style, oh, just cool. manically yeah, yeah, yeah. going through. But then yeah. when that chorus hits, it does feel like that <sighs> this like decompression away from some of that craziness, but more in like this calming state where it's like kind of like what I was looking at it, where you're kind of like finding that new home again for yourself, not the home that you've known that's been you know an absolute terror just feeling trapped, destructive force inside your head, but something new that's going to be a lot more therapeutic, a lot more helpful, a lot more positive for your mental well-being. But when it comes to the sleep paralysis thing too, just kind of that calming effect when it's like, okay, you know, you're, you're back in that, a better state. You're not in the manic state. You're not in the, you're not freaking out at the same point in time. You're not in that feeling of feeling trapped where those verses, just how heavy and manic they're sounding can really create. And it makes so much sense to the point where, Anyone can listen to this song and they're going to get that feeling of potentially of feeling trapped, feeling like they're stuck somewhere and that something is bearing down on them that they can't get past. And when that chorus hits, it's not necessarily getting past it, but that decompression moment where, all right, that pressure is gone. That threat is gone. That feeling of trapped is gone. So I can stick my head up, take a look around and see potentially where my next move can be to make sure I don't stay in this situation. Yeah, for sure. And and I think like um to touch on that as well. Um one of the things I thought about before we launched the song was that oh, okay, does what kind of things would people take away from the song if they didn't know the meaning behind it? And um you know, we we haven't talked about it all that much so far, but mental health and mental health issues like, you know, depression and anxiety and things are all things that I think people could potentially relate to within this song. So if anyone out there does struggle with those things, I think this song perhaps has something for them that they could listen to this and find please, something. Please don't substitute therapy. <laughs> yeah, please please don't, don't, don't yeah, substitute yeah. therapy. Still go to therapy. Just <laughs> also listen to our music. Thank you. <laughs> you use it, use it as um, a supplemental piece for your therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on a serious note you know they might find something that they can relate to in that song so um so yeah but that was really cool to hear your interpretation man and uh thanks for sharing that by the way that was really that was really cool really cool man really, really oh, cool. You're, you're very welcome i mean you guys make a song you guys put your heart and soul into it the least i can do is give my all when it comes to looking into it getting my own, own understanding of it so that when we talk about it when you guys talk about where you guys came up with it, where your mindset was, how you created it, how everything flowed together, I can 
pick up on those things. I can relate to those things. But also when it comes to listening to the song, I can find something in it for myself. Because uh, Ryan, like you're talking about, you know, other things that when it comes to mental health, like other issues, depression, anxiety. Yeah, that man, those manic verses, those manic free courses, it can feel like we have that 2000 pound gorilla, whether it's what, whatever it might be. I'll use depression as, as my example, just because I, I have dealt with that before. And it does feel like it's impossible to shake. And it's, it's scary. It, it feels like you're trapped underneath something. You're being like, you know, basically strangled and suffocated by it. You don't know how to get out. But there's always going to be those times in there where maybe you're going to have that slight break from it, whether it's, you know, maybe you're just hanging out with a friend and all of a sudden, you know, mentally, you're kind of getting a little bit clear because you're focused on what's going on in the present and that depression yeah, mindset is gone. Or if you're myself, when we were going through that, you end up, you know, going to a concert, jumping in a mosh pit and life just makes <laughs> sense for an hour and a half. It's those are those moments where the chorus can come in for a bit and be that that decompressing, yeah. that opening back up again to more of that healthier, sometimes positive state. Yeah, that negative state will come back again, but you get that break in there that makes you understand that things can be better. Life can go on. You can make it through. Yeah, man, yeah. definitely. Uh, and uh, to to just add to that as well, we we lo- we love jumping in mosh bits, don't we, Ben? So <laughs> yeah, we uh we we love watching bands and we love going and uh, having a mosh to bands. So if you uh if we're ever playing a festival, we'll probably be in the crowd. <laughs> Hell yeah! God <laughs> so damn, I'm sure that's... we'll see lots of people there. I have to come over to one of these UK festivals just to make sure if you guys are playing it, because I'll know at some point during the week you guys will be in the pit and you'll see my dumbass face in there just pushing people <laughs> around, throwing shoulders, and all of a sudden just, hi! <laughs> <laughs> this, is when, this is when you punch me in the face, isn't it? <laughs> well, only, only if Knock Loose is playing. Only if Knock Loose is uh, yeah. playing. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, Knock Loose is so good. Oh, so man. good. So, so good, good, man. Amazing band. Amazing are, they playing band. Any, are they playing any UK festivals this year? I, I think I've seen them on... They, I think they are. Once, I mean, I'm like, not sure. I mean, when it comes to like currently, when it comes to hardcore bands, there's nobody that is on the even that kind of level is not loose. I mean, here in the U.S. in late 2022, when uh, or in fall 2022, when Bring Me the Horizon was doing their headlining run, like they had knocked loose as their direct support, and it made ridiculously so much sense. Like, yeah. I, like I remember going to the show, and it was just like, okay, you know. <laughs> First band goes on, the crowd was just not really feeling it. The second band goes on, it was kind of a little bit of a weirder mix. But like the the like the front man was getting the crowd into it, like he was just working off, and, and people were receptive. Here comes Knock Loose, and the <laughs> pit just opens up like none other. I'm just like, oh dear God, this is gonna be nuts. <laughs> yeah. We had a security guard come and watch the pit, and he was so intrigued by what was going on. It was his first ever rock or metal show. And no he's wondering way. why are people going this crazy? And it's not oh God. What? An, what? Imagine that being your first, like, <laughs> imagine that being your initiation as like a yeah. security. Guy. You're like, Dude, all right, you're gonna, you're gonna have to deal with this not loose show. He jumped oh, into the pit with us. He jumped in because he wanted to see what it was like. Started seeing people go one on one with each other, and he wanted to do it with somebody. No way. So he That's tapped awesome. me on the shoulder. He's like, "Dude, let's go, let's go." And I'm like, "Oh man, That's I so can cool. actually hit a security guard in a mosh pit with no consequences right now." <laughs> I'm not saying no oh, to this, buddy. Boy. <laughs> I think I, I took him down in like four hits, and I picked him back up. I'm like, how was that, man? And the dude was going nuts. So he was in the pit the rest of the time with us for knock loose. Bring me the horizon goes on right as the pit opens up. Who's the person I see in the middle right next to me? The security guard. I'm like, oh dear yeah, lord, we have mad. made another one. <laughs> so cool. Oh, so mate, cool. that actually that actually reminds me. Um, that reminds me of the story of how I met Hayden like long before he joined the band. I don't know if I told you this, Ryan. No, this oh, is sure. the first time I'm hearing it. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. Um, well, I, I didn't so much as like meet him, but I saw him. And then like later when he asked to join the band, I was like, oh, you're that guy. Um, <laughs> basically over um, over uh, lockdown to like towards the end of lockdown, uh, we started having a few shows back here in the UK, but they had to be like, they were very strict rules. They had to be seated, you know, you had to be evenly spaced, wearing masks, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the local venue to me uh, put on a metal all a metal like all day as one of the first shows back and it was dead like it was so dead i'm talking like 10 people showed up 
for the through, throughout the entire day. There were never actually 10 people in the room at the same time. But um, there was this one uh, hardcore band on the uh, on the lineup. Pretty sick, actually. But uh, I sat down. I sat down in the back because my missus was um, taking. Uh, she was the photographer for the venue, so she was up there taking photos. I sat at the back, and there was this one other table of like four people sat over there. And this one guy just got up and started like hardcore dancing like from side to side in the room <laughs> no way was that hayden you fucking bet it was mate <laughs> <laughs> no way that's mad well, dude i didn't even realize that until we were on the call um yeah. when hayden wanted to join the band and i met him and, and he said to me he goes uh, oh i've actually met you before like, all right oh, and you were like wait have i and then you just got like flashbacks of him just like, yeah. <laughs> in slow motion <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, do you remember Southwest Heavy Fest 20, uh, 2020 or so? Oh, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny, dude. That is funny. I met Hayden. Oh, while we're talking about this, I met Hayden on Warzone <laughs> on Call of Duty. So I was playing Warzone with some friends and um, some other friends that play in bands and stuff. And um, yeah, we had this this lobby going and we were, you know, playing loads of games. And then one minute they're like, oh, we're going to get invite my mate Hayden or whatever. So he jumps on and me and him had such a laugh on this, this game of COD. I just remember it being like, honestly, one of the, some of the funniest couple of games that I've ever played. It was hilarious. And we got on so well. And then he followed me on Instagram and I followed him. And, and it was only like a few weeks later that I realized that he was a vocalist because I obviously, we didn't talk about that on COD. We were just playing COD. And uh, yeah, I checked him out on there, and yeah, man, he was he was really good. Like he 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 really impressed me actually, and that was one of the reasons why at the time um, I suggested to the guys like he might be a good shout for um for a vocalist when we were looking, and and effectively to link back to what we said earlier, we ended up with quite a it, you know we weren't without a vocalist for too long, um and and we kind of just lucked out really that we well it <laughs> we was it was weird yeah. wasn't it. Because yeah. and I still to this day don't understand how the hell he got all these things. But um, so before in fear, I think Hay- Hayden was in one other like serious band, but they they hadn't really done anything. They'd maybe done like a self produced EP or a self produced couple tracks or something like that. So he hadn't been in a proper like studio environment or like done tours or any of this stuff. Uh, so so in a sense of like music industry career he didn't have any um but there were just these videos popping up everywhere of him <laughs> of him like just doing vocal features with loathe like going on on stage with loathe uh this is probably when uh what well, this was after they released cold sun um so yeah <laughs> it's like doing that with loathe then like uh doing a vocal feature with uh lotus eater um obviously you know, 2019 Lotus Eater. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were the other bands? There were other bands, weren't there? But, he, but yeah, others. anyway. But he was everywhere, he was, man. He was everywhere. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I don't get it. Like, like, this guy is not in a band. He doesn't know many of these people. And he's just on stage with them doing both. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. He, he was like some people that he did features for he didn't necessarily know like that close at the time Hmm. and um it was just a case of like hayden was just in the scene like he was a guy that loads of people (laughs) seemed to know yeah so and he's not he wasn't old he wasn't old. when he when he joined the band he was 21 yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's mad so it was a real fluke for us honestly and um i i think we were blessed to to pick him up in the band it's so cool and i think to to you know talk about what he he's brought to the table um the fact that he's he can sing in the way that he can like you can hear on abyss for example is one of the things that i think is another string to our bow in terms of that um sound that we were going after as that's something that we really wanted to to get to was a position where we could have someone sing in that kind of dreamy style and um you know, I think Hayden brought that to the table and has really helped to push our sound forward um, with him on board. So, you know, with our future stuff that hopefully you guys will hear soon, 
um, when it comes out. You'll hear a lot of that. Um, on hey, it. He's he's going to have such a hard on if he listens to this back. <laughs> yeah, just, we're just sucking him off for like 10 minutes, aren't we? But there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, because of the crazy stories you told about me and Hayden, what I'm half expecting right now is to see on the Zoom call, see someone like a random thing pop up on the side of my participants, be like, who the heck is this? And then it, and see me like pop on from like three years in the future and be like, well, when I first met Hayden, and just have to be crazy or ridiculous. I'd be like, oh my God, does everyone meet this dude in the most insane way? Whether it's seeing him hardcore dance, do the one man hardcore dance at a 2020, you know, metal fest show that only 10 people show up or just randomly meeting him while playing call of duty and laughing my ass off. No, it's probably be something like, Oh, I smashed my head open in the pit. And the reason because he came flying off the stage with a steel chair and decided to treat me like stone cold Steve Austin. You're going with the tech fest story. Aren't you Ryan? No, 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 no. Okay. That's no. fine. Oh, <laughs> so funny. But no, man, he he might you might see him if anyone's if anyone wants to come to the UK and watch some Mel gigs, then you might bump into Aiden. <laughs> it's quite likely. That you could. <laughs> it'll, or it'll or if, and if Infear's not playing, you might end up seeing him on stage doing a random vocal feature. Absolutely, some yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Well, no, but we did Tech Fest everywhere. Like, yeah, th- this year at Tech Fest, what did he do? Like four different vocal <laughs> like, features at this like, festival. Yes. He did vocal features for so many bands, dude. It was insane. <laughs> They were so sick as well. They were all banging, like un- yeah, was, unbelievable. But it's yeah. a har- harbinger monasteries, um, exist immortal. Yeah, just uh, to name a few. To... Yeah, he, like, he did more. He's mad. Yeah, he's <laughs> mad. Honestly, but yeah, but, dude, crazy but just stuff. Think, I'll say but just think about this: just if he's doing all these different random vocal features for all these different bands in a live setting, just creating, you know, just you guys saw him doing this stuff. His own lore in the scene that you guys have going on right now is just growing and growing and is creating strong relationships with a lot of other bands alongside you guys. So when people come over to the UK, if they're looking for people to play with them, hey, who, who do you want to play with? Who do you want to have on? Who's going to end up bringing people into in, in to the venue, packing this venue up and getting us off on this show on the right path? In Fear is going to be on the top of the list. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, uh, that's so sick that you say that. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> ultimately, we 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 love all the bands that we play with. Um, genuinely, because we're all fans at heart. You know, we're fans first, musicians second. I'd probably say, with how much yeah. we love this genre and like everything that goes on. So, um, but obviously, you know, networking and and working with people and Hayden doing features and things, and hopefully in the future, you know, as musicians like and guitarists and you know producers songwriters whatever that'll be we'd love to work with other people so and and bring those connections so yeah man just keep the connections rolling keep them coming and i think one of the things that you even said at the beginning of this podcast just telling the abridged like seven minute story of what's happened with the biz <laughs> since it came out was you know after its release you've seen many people jump on top of it including sharing it you know talking about it, letting people know about it from your local scene as well. So that does have a lot in there. And it does also have a lot to say, you guys are making your mark, not only on the local scene that you have, but it's a, such a positive mark where you guys are seeing success and people want to do whatever they can to make sure that success is sustained. Yeah. Definitely. yeah, It's so nice. It's so, so nice to see stuff like that. I can't think of many other ways of explaining it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to stop saying it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 all I would say is, you know, thank you to everyone that's yeah. been checking it out so far and anything that people do, whether it's like, you know, checking it out, liking it, commenting, sharing it with their friends, all of that stuff helps us out more than people realize. You know, I think only people in bands most of the time know like how difficult it is to get your name out there and, um, you know, or, you know, small businesses and artists and things like that. Um, and all of those things help massively in terms of spreading your your like reach and getting people to hear about you. So yeah, thank you to everyone, honestly. Yeah, because it can just be the smallest. It could be the biggest thing. It could be the smallest thing. It could be you going on top of the rooftops and just start screaming at people, listen to a best buy in fear. You know, just <laughs> plastering everything all across town, just, you know, going old school, printing out flyers, just posting them to different lampposts and power and like uh like electrical poles whatever it might be or it could be something as simple as just post like if your friend you know makes a has a new song coming out or if a band that you like has a new song coming out they're not that big just share it somewhere put it on share it on twitter share it on tiktok instagram facebook 
who cares? I, I, I mean, go if you still got MySpace and they still have you know <laughs> the song is on your profile, put it on as that. It doesn't matter. This anything will give any band that you like and any friend that you have that's creating music, any any kind of creative space, any kind of business space. It gives them just a little bit more. It no matter even how small it is, because in this vast world that we live in, using music as the example. The amount of bands that are out there, the amount of musicians yeah. that are out there, the amount of unique music that is out there, and the accessibility that we have to it now with streaming services to the point where if you don't, if you find something that just randomly pops on and you don't like it in the first five seconds, you're probably just going back to what you are used to listening to and yeah, just no, like, no okay, doubt. I yeah, know yeah. this. But if a friend, if someone that you know, if someone that you just have any sort of relationship with says, hey, I like this song, Abyss by In Fear, go check it out. Now, if I see that, I might have some certain respect for that person's opinion, some respect for that person's taste in music, enough to say, I'm going to go check this out. And I'm not going to turn it off after five seconds. I'm not going to turn it off after 10 seconds. I might get a minute in and make my decision. But that gives you guys, as an artist, so much more time to hook somebody in to your sound, to your style, and they get a bigger sample size off that. Just one share of a song can get somebody else in the band. It's like that weird thing. It's like, okay, it's like exponential growth potentially. Yeah. You keep doing it over and over man. again. Yeah, I don't definitely. think anything, I don't think anything will ever compare to word of mouth. Like, no, no, what, right. what you were just explaining there but is, you know, it's the, it's the double-edged sword of how music is today. I mean, people used to complain, I don't know, like 20 years ago that it was extremely hard for a band to get big because you'd have to get picked up by the certain record label to make sure you're stuff uh, make sure your music's put in front of uh, a wide enough audience so the music industry adapted to you know put accessibility into the mix and now you know you, you've got a hundred thousand bands trying to fight for five odd spots <laughs> it, it's it's you know it's still just as hard to get big because now you've just got to contend with 99 999 other bands <laughs> instead of just like trying to get onto a record label or something yeah. But that being said, what you what you were saying about uh, building connections with uh, with your audience and making sure they like your stuff enough to recommend it to other people that is always going to be king in a world where um, your social presence is kind of everything. Yeah, like your biggest fans are the people that will help you grow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if there are people out there that you know love in fear enough to go out and say or whatever band it is, go up to their mates and be like, you really need to check out this band. This song is amazing. I've been listening to it all day. You know, that kind of stuff. And if it's a friend, then they'll, you know, they'll be like, oh, well, I'll give that a go, you know, or whatever it is. And that that means so much more than what you see on socials most of the time. Because people are kind enough to share, and there are people out there that take the time to listen to that. If uh, they see someone's, like, status or post or whatever that says check out this band but that never compares to you know it it, like ben says i don't think it touches um word of mouth even though you know it does have an impact i think word of mouth is always going to be the the king like you say it's going to be the biggest one well as as, um i I know obviously you know we're, we're still a relatively small band in the grand scheme of things well we are a small band in the grand scheme of things (laughs) but even getting from that, uh, you know, that stage where you're starting off in your local scene, you're playing your local bar or pub or something for like 20 quid, 20 quid a night or something like that. Getting from that stage to being able to tour the country and be taken seriously, all of that success we've had from word of mouth. We've had from somebody has mentioned to a manager like, oh, this band were really good, blah, blah, blah. And then that brand manager's reached out to us. We've gone with them. They've spoken to someone else. And we've just been building from there. Honestly, the growth we've had from releasing the EP in 2019 is just, it's still mad to me. Yeah. Uh, and we're not yeah. even that far. It's like, that's, that's the best yeah, you, part. You guys just, still have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, we got we got miles to go. We're at the bottom of a of mount everest at the moment but it's like you know it's still crazy like ben said and we're super grateful for the fact that we've even gotten to where we are now through the likes of people saying this band's sick check them out it's amazing so 
yeah thanks to everyone that does that honestly it's, it's insane and also if anyone wants to go out there and stand at the top of a rooftop and shout in fear for like 10 hours then yeah that would be incredible <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna end up just creating a little um you know audio segment i'm just gonna have it shout in fear i'm gonna do it once then i'm gonna sick. copy and yeah. paste it so it's 10 <laughs> hours long like those 10 hour youtube videos i'm just like mr Krabs going <laughs> and just for 10 hours and that's gonna be on the, on the rooftops i mean it might annoy some people but you know what you take yeah, that fuck chance. it they'll but, remember our names so yeah. cool. but then again kind of speaking of word of mouth too because it was like when i when i got your guys' stuff on uh via email from james he's like yeah check this out i'm like well james you sent me some good shit beforehand so i would be hard pressed to say no to checking this out so let's give it a shot let's see what happens <laughs> and i mean that's how i found out about you guys i was like well Word of mouth, literally right there. There's a perfect yeah, example yeah. of it. Hey, I, I'm not going to lie. I was so surprised. Um, I was really surprised that James took us on because I, I I knew that he knew about us through another band that, uh, that was on his label. Um, they would mentioned us to, to him. I was really surprised because we are quite easily the heaviest band he's ever had on his label by by a while, I think. So yeah, it was really strange when he came out and uh and asked us. Glad it was he awesome. did. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was really. Happy you're right. With it. You're right. Yeah. It was like out of the blue and unexpected, basically, wasn't it? Um, mm. really cool though. And yeah, you know, compared to the other bands on the roster, we're um we're definitely on the heavier side. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's cool. We love it. So. But sometimes those yield like the craziest results too, because you see sometimes, you know, labels or even like tour packages, sometimes they have some of these most random weird bands that you never would thought would be on there. <laughs> and then you see them on the tour package and you actually go and like, it's like on paper. Why? But then you go and see them <laughs> perform live. It's like, oh, it was like, I'll use the Bad Omens tour too, because it was thousand below. Okay. Post hardcore. Okay. We can get into it. Then make them suffer. And Day Seeker and Bad Omens, like I said, or make them suffer works with Bad Omens, but, but right before Day Seeker, how is this gonna end up vibing? Yeah, that's oh, that's it pretty, went fine. Yeah. Or Knock Loose went on tour in the U.S. in 2022, earlier 2022. They were a headline. It was a headliner. They had Kubla Khan on tour with them. Okay, oh, that yeah. makes sense, right? <laughs> Movements was in between Kubla Khan and Knocked Loose. No on way. paper, this is. How the fuck do we go from smashy, smashy, hardcore dancing to pop punk to smashy, smashy, hardcore dancing? Yeah, that was mad. This doesn't make any sense, mad. right? I saw it live and it was like, this is absolutely incredible. Like, yeah, it, it I bet fits it was so sick. So damn well. Sick. This is funny you say that, actually, because we played um we played a show in London on our last uh, our last run that we did with Creek, um, another UK band that you should check out. And uh, on that run, we played a show in London and this lineup was absolutely nuts it was so cool it was amazing but it, it had was really sick it had like a, a massive mixture of bands there was like hardcore metalcore like um sort of like uh i don't, well creek i can't even describe you just need to go and check them out they're <laughs> they're, they're, just... they're, they're hardcore they're like new wave yeah. hardcore like load style Sort of. yeah yeah. Uh, yeah very very heavy so you know yeah. if you like knock loose and you like loathe and stuff then you're definitely like creek um and there was that going on but then in between we had like a pop punk band didn't we like in the middle if i remember yeah. rightly oh no they even addressed it didn't they he came yeah, on stage yeah, yeah. and he's just there like we don't fit on this lineup <laughs> so what <laughs> but everyone so was there just, gonna... just loving it weren't they like i thought it was sick and everyone else that was said. there was just loving it did he say something like, you're just going to have to sit through half an hour of pop punk, good luck, and then just <laughs> the and just went for it, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I I, can't remember who I was talking to about this, but I personally think lineups like that are really sick because it actually makes for a really good show because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that everyone's the same, but for me, I enjoy lots of genres, not just metal. So when I'm going to a gig, if, for example, there was a pop punk band on there, on the lineup alongside some metal bands or some hardcore bands or whatever. If those bands are good and most of the crowd enjoy that band, you know, demo the demographic of who's there, then I think that's fucking sick. But and it makes for a way more entertaining show. Because you're not just getting slammed with, you know, hours of hardcore music or whatever. You've got this diversity in between. So this sort of like ebb and flow of different styles and 
you know, it actually makes for a really interesting concert. So I don't know if it ever happened, but I don't know if you guys saw. It was um maybe a year ago or maybe more. Um, Bring Me um announced the tour with Lorna Shaw. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. I remember that because um oh yeah, Lorna Shaw dropped out of a tour with someone else i can't remember that was it was now. before was it before will ramos was around was uh, around no, that time no 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 he was in the band he was in the band um um or was it a was or was it a day to remember because they were on that bill as well it was something like a day to remember lorna shaw lorna shaw were like a, they were opening bomb, and then yeah, yeah it was yeah. like a day to remember bring me no, it, it, i don't yeah, know if it happened no no i'm trying that... to think because it because it, i think i think poor stacy might have been on there as well like yeah, it was I really think... weird I think they might have dropped out of a tour with uh, Chelsea Grin. Oh yeah, it was something. I, I think like that, it was Chelsea it? Yeah. Grin. They dropped out of a tour with to join Bring Me on tour. But, but it either was just way, like that tour mental. Was sick. I was like, that is so insanely cool. Imagine going to that gig and you watch Lorna Shaw, <laughs> and then you watch Bring Me the Horizon. That is just sick. I love that. I fucking love that. Yeah, now I'm, I'm like I'm trying to look it up right now because I know exactly what you're talking about. I want to make sure I get the bands right, but I can't think of which one it is. No, it was a while ago, and I actually don't think it happened. I'm yeah, fairly no. convinced it didn't happen. No, both tours, um, neither of the tours went ahead in the end because one of our uh, one of our friends' bands was supposed to be out on tour with Lord Ashore on that first one, and uh, yeah, it never went ahead in the end. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, yeah, it would have been it would have been Lorna Shore, poor Stacy, and Dana. Remember, bring me the horizon, uh, which would have been yeah. so mad, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, so cool. I love it. That was just the one that popped into my head when we were talking <laughs> about these lineups. I was like, yeah. man, I remember seeing that one and just being like, fuck, that is one of the coolest yeah. <laughs> lineups I've ever seen. How I always look at it now is, it doesn't matter what genre you're a part of. It doesn't matter what style of music you make. You can fit on a tour package. The thing that has to fit is the energy level. Because I'm thinking yeah, about yeah, this. Definitely. I've seen shows where, you know, the bands that are on this on the like on that level, like they fit. But all of a sudden there's one band where the energy just kind of dips and like it just kind of really I'm not saying it ruins the show, but it takes the show into a different realm. And always the example I bring up is this is 2019. A, a day to remember was the headliner. I prevail was right before him, and Beartooth was the opener. It's going to be hard to follow up Bear 2 with Caleb oh, Shobo's yeah, manic yeah, yeah. energy. And I Prevail started out hot. Like, it was like, bow down and then gasoline. It's like, holy shit. And then they dip into, like, all the softer stuff on the drum. And it was just, the energy got sucked out. And then a day to remember goes on. It's like, now you feel that there's this certain lull in there. But if you, I'm like thinking, you know, if you bring in, you know, say you bring in a pop punk band, a hardcore band, metalcore band. And you bring in, let's say you bring in someone like Tech 9 to be on a show <laughs> if the energy is always consistently going you know it can absolutely work hell i could see tech nine nine point and seven dust if i wanted to make something absolutely insane happen yeah, yeah, and all yeah, the, yeah. And like sure, you man. think about yeah. it, it's like tech nine does not fit in the style of nine point or seven dust but tech nine at that show would absolutely <laughs> smack yeah man I, I think people would absolutely kill for that kind of gig that's the sort of shit that i love to see and What's I they, think they ended up enjoy stuff stuff like that. Honestly, well, they ended up having something like that in uh down download twenty nineteen. You just had the main stage, which was just you know metal acts throughout the day, and then it was just die outward in the middle. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I, like I remember mental. sitting at the main stage and I was like, "Why are they here?" And then they started playing again. And I was like, "Ah, yeah, that's why they're playing <laughs> here. This is sick." <laughs> yeah, I think so, I think Slipknot man. were on straight after them on the oh, main God. stage. Yeah. yeah mad it's but, just it's yeah. cool i love seeing that kind of diversity on a lineup um in terms of musical genres and stuff but go to what you said about energy so important i mean but it, it's interesting as well because sometimes you know on to look at it from two angles the the change stylistically sometimes brings with it a much softer approach you know like if you compare a band like deftones they're a little bit more like you know they can be a little bit almost awkward on stage on purpose because that's kind of their sound. And then on the heavy parts, they can move around a lot and they can be a bit more energetic. Um, so it just depends like really what, what works best. And that's where people who organize these things, I think do an amazing job of, of uh, actually thinking, right, what's going to fit. Cause if you want a high energy show start to finish, then 
you can do that across many genres. You know, you could have all sorts of stuff in there and people could go absolutely nuts for the whole show. So I, I love shit like this, honestly. It's so cool to talk about as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if we had, uh, this was April around 2020, like late April 2022 here where, uh, where I'm from. We had a show come through. It was Day Seeker was headlining. It was right before, it was before their recent album came out was when they were still doing all the sleep talk and stuff. Yeah, and like their support was Thornhill holding absence and caskets. Oh and yeah, like, I know that one. Yeah. I'm like, this is gonna yeah. be a little bit of a softer energy. But this is gonna be a love shit ton to of fun. See that lineup, but man. I would have yeah. actually. Loved I would have that. loved to see that lineup. <laughs> we're we're huge. Well, me and Ben, I, I, yeah. I know that anyway. We're huge Thornhill and holding absence fans. Big big fans. So yeah. you know, I, I like Dayseeker as well. Um, I definitely like Dayseeker as well, but those two bands especially are very close to me. So I I, yeah. I think that would have been such a yeah. dream lineup to see those bands <laughs> all together, man. I would have loved Listen, that. Not going to lie, I went to that show specifically because I'm like, I want to see Caskets and Holding Absence played. Thornhill and Dayseeker were just like cherries on top of the Sunday, but man, was that show just something else. It was the energy flow it was more of a it was a little bit more of a chill vibe to start out but then it, it got the energy in a different way but it just felt it just felt right every step of the way yeah. even watching thornhill i'm just like did this do literally just like watch robert plant move on stage for like <laughs> a whole like during lockdown and then dude he's got some moves move. isn't he like it was fucking ridiculous yeah dude he's got moves man i've seen some stuff on his story recently where he's like fucking He's got the the mic stand and he's like leant right over and he's like fucking rocking out. And I'm like, dude, it looks like I'm watching Woodstock, you know, in the sixties or something. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, this shit's sick. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy cool to talk that shit. It's really interesting, but it just adds to the experience of the show. It adds to the energy of the show. It, whatever energy you're going with, it's like it just flows along with it to the point where you can go from one band to another. Cause even Thornhill played some heavier stuff too, and it all completely fit. Dayseeker yeah, really yeah. kind of dropped it low for a point and then brought it back up. It's like, all right, we're into this shit. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Are you a big Dayseeker fan? Do you like Dayseeker? Uh, I'm not as big in a Dayseeker as, as I know other people are. For me, I'm yeah. more into the, like, I like the heavier stuff out of those, but like from that lineup, like that I talked about for me, I mean, I was, if it was even between Holy Absence and Caskets, I was there to fucking see Caskets play. Yeah, Cause yeah. Caskets are good. Actually. We, um, like they're they're British band, aren't they? UK yep, band, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it uh, used to be, uh, they used to be called something else. Didn't used they? to be called uh, Captives. Come on. I forgot what was that? They, were called. they used to be called Captives. That oh, was, that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but yes. there was something with some like Australian <laughs> punk band that for some reason had yeah. a trademark on the name only in the UK and not in Australia. Yeah. It was a really weird thing. Like when I saw it, I That's actually was like, strange. "What the fuck?" I read the article and I was curious about it. So. I brought caskets on the podcast oh. and I talked to him about it. Oh, I just remembered. Do you remember when we had that, uh, the copyright scare, Ryan? No. <laughs> what was yeah. that? What was... Oh, no, that, was, that was just after our last tour. Um, we got a message. Uh, we got a message on our, on our uh, band Instagram. It was somebody, I swear they were just like off their face. Oh, no, yes. Like no, this. no, I remember yeah. now. I remember they now. They, I remember they sent us that. a message saying like, oh, I'm sorry, but I think I made, oh, what was it? I think I made In Fear more mine than I meant to. And then sent us a screenshot that they had like organized a copyright, but it was under, um, it, it wasn't under like a band name. It was under like Garden Tools or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit, we can't bring out those in fear shears or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like, some weird like, stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah they were just strange. They did that and then they sent us like another 10 messages, just like garbage. And I was just sat there reading it on the phone, just like, who does this? I got like, proper scared by that. Yeah. Actually. That freaked me like, the fuck out. Yeah. You've paid money to get the copyright, <laughs> but you've selected the wrong category. <laughs> yeah, man, that was so weird. So weird. <laughs> I'm so glad you reminded me of that. I completely <laughs> forgot. It was, geez, oh, so that's the weirdest that. thing ever. I'm sure, it's, right, that yeah. when people get really famous, they get shit like this all the time. But we don't. And that was the weirdest thing, honestly. Was when <laughs> we had those messages, I was just like, oh my God, should I be scared? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Wait, Hay Hayden was actually like, I swear he was just hyperventilating. He, he was yeah, like, he was freaking out. He, freaked yeah, he out. was, he was like, like, proper freaked out by it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that well, band that we're talking about, Caskets, 
Um, man, they're fucking good. The the <laughs> singer is unbelievable, dude. And um, I don't know, like I I'm, I imagine quite a few people that they'll listen to the podcast know about Dreambound, the channel, the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we we owe some success to Dreambound because they were kind enough to have us on, and um, some of our other singles we launched on Dreambound. And uh, some of the Dreambound fans, you know, know about us and support us and stuff. But I know that Caskets um, do some stuff with Dreambound or have done. And uh, they've, you know, it's been massive on there. And right, rightfully so, you know, they're a sick band. Um, so, yeah, really that's are. cool that, that you know, you're a big fan. I mean, maybe we'll get some in for your Casket shows coming in the future. Unfortunately, though, I don't think we'll be able to buy my in fear branded weed whacker at your merch <laughs> table, which I was Mate, really I'll... hoping to. Damn it. Yeah. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll get a lawyer on it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I hope so because I want to see it happen. If it means I have to come over to the UK and find a way to, you know, get buy a in fear branded weed whacker and find a way to take it home back here in the United States on a plane, I'm going to do it. I don't know yeah, how, man. but I'm gonna hey, do it. Hey man, we got we've got still got the uh stencils we spray all our gear with. I'll just spray a weed whacker with it. <laughs> I'll just bring a, I'll bring <laughs> my own weed whacker and be like <laughs> Ben, I need help. Spray this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's oh, funny. A new oh. merch item that we need to sell on our store, Ben. So don't forget about that, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about that. I've got one more thing I want to ask you guys before we close this out, and that is because we're heading into 2023. We're heading into a new year. <laughs> teasing it, not giving me anything, but just teasing some stuff. What can I expect or what can we expect from In Fear in the new year? That wasn't supposed to rhyme, but I made it anyway. Nice rhyme, dude. You should write lyrics, bro. <laughs> no, you can expect a lot from us, honestly. Yeah. A lot. Um we 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 can't give away the the specifics because that'll come in you know hopefully short time due course, but um keep an eye on us for the next couple of weeks into the beginning of next year and uh, people will see we we've got a lot of stuff happening, um definitely some tours, um in twenty twenty three and hopefully in the earlier part of the year, um with some incredible bands, um but the the biggest thing really and i you know no surprise because we've alluded to it already but more music is coming lots of it so <laughs> keep an eye on it and uh you shall enjoy lots of amazing songs that we've worked really hard on so yeah well let's, let's put it this way we uh we wrote a this four years ago we didn't spend those four years doing nothing <laughs> yeah we, so, we, yeah. Yeah, thanks, ben. yeah yeah we yeah. we spent a lot of time working on new material and um and we're very very excited to get it out so it's 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 on its way you guys will hear it very soon well i'm looking forward to it. i think more people are gonna be looking forward to seeing you guys play live and it's gonna be a good year 2023 is gonna be a good year for in fear did i do it definitely Freaking yeah. right. i can't believe that we're already in 2023 nearly that's crazy yeah. i gotta stop this dr seuss shit so i'm gonna do this to stop my dr seuss rhyming so as we bring this podcast inclusion one thing i'd like to do is give you guys a chance to say whatever you want to say plug whatever you want to plug promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the podcast so ben ryan floor is yours go for it ben i'll follow after oh go on then okay so if ever like thank you but, yeah, I, I just shagged that. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. You guys, are <laughs> that's it. We're done. Cut. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you, everybody that's uh, tuned in to to listen. Thank you, everybody that's already that already knows us, and everybody that's going to check us out after this. You can find all our stuff on every single streaming platform. Uh, all of our music videos on YouTube, and all of our merch on infear.co.uk. Oh, uh, is there anything else? Go listen to Abyss. It's on Go YouTube. Listen to Abyss. Yeah. It's on our YouTube channel at Infear Official. All of our socials at Infear Official. We're on TikTok now as well. So go and check us out on there if you want some funny stuff because we're posting funny stuff on there. Um, go and buy our merch and stream our music. And hopefully we'll see you at some shows as well. So if anyone wants to come and watch us in the UK, come and see us. And hopefully in the near future we'll be in America. But and also the- Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> And also, it's not all about us. Give this dude some love yeah, for having us man. on today. Like, yeah, this has been so sick. <laughs> this has been awesome, dude. So really, really appreciate you taking the time to have us on, honestly. It's been really fun. 
I yeah. appreciate you guys taking the time to be on the podcast as well. So now it's time for this podcast with three very specific things. First things first, you guys just heard what they had to say in terms of there's more new music coming out. There's more crazy shit coming out. You're not going to want to miss out on this. You're going to want to stream their music, buy some merch, support them, go see them play live when they're in the UK, hopefully in the US and around the world at some point soon, and just follow along with them in general. So what's the best way to do it is to follow them on all their social media. Uh, you know, watch YouTube videos, stream the music, buy some merch, you can get that in fear branded weed whacker that is not going to be copyrighted. So where's the best place to go for all that stuff? Well, how about this? Go to the description of the podcast. It's going to say find in fear online. You're going to see labels for all of their social media accounts, labels where you can watch YouTube videos, labels for the website, labels for the merch, labels for all the streaming platforms and the associated links right next to them. So all you have to do is click the link and boom, you're going right there. I'm doing all the research for you. I'm doing all the dirty work for you. It's literally a click or a tap and go. That's all you got to do. I'm making it as easy as possible. Come on, help me That's out so here. so easy. You have so to click easy. it, guys. Come you on. have to click it. You have to click it. Now it's time for number two. Gemma, whenever I have guests on the podcast that I enjoy having on the podcast, I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say, one, thank you for taking the time for me on the podcast. And secondly, I would like to continue to support the band any way I can. So this happens literally like every time I have people on the podcast and you guys, yep, we're running this back with you. So it's not an if, it's a when. When implies it will happen. We just don't know when. When I get to see you guys perform live for the first time, because it will happen. I just don't know when. But when I get yeah, to see definitely. you guys perform live, my promise to you, first round's on me. Oh, oh hell yeah. <laughs> yes hey, you sir are a legend yeah. and this is why yeah. we absolutely love you along and with you having us on here and being such an amazing host so thank you so much and thank you to everyone that's listened today because uh if any of you are checking this out it means the world and uh support everything uh about this podcast because it's it's fucking sick so yeah thank you once again now it's time for me to go with number three which is i can't say goodbye on the the end this podcast fuck no that doesn't sound right because of a couple reasons one that is way too final that is way too like okay that's it no 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 i don't like that because i've made you guys a promise that first round's on me and i will see you perform live and um, you guys can better hold that to ah, better hold me to that when i get to go see you play live and secondly is this the only time I ever want to have you guys in the podcast? The answer to that is fuck no. I'd love to have you guys back on with more <laughs> new music, with more crazy stories, with more craziness, with more great conversation. So I can't end this by saying goodbye. That is way Aww. too final. I have Aww. to end it by saying this. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Legend. Mate, we'd, we'd love to. <laughs> yeah, we absolutely love to come back. So, yeah. But there's no so much more that. stuff we can talk about once uh, a bit of time's passed. <laughs> there will be but until yeah. then guys i'll see you later yeah see you later man well folks that's my interview with ryan and ben for the band in fear out of the united kingdom once again their song abyss is out now for you to go check out yeah if i mean mental destruction caused by not only yourself but people that have a lot of influence right? that's how i took it it's a song about sleep paralysis but really the mental weight that a lot of these issues from a mental health standpoint having us are really expressed in this song abyss so go check it out you can follow along with everything that in fear has to offer new music social media stuff just good all content and whenever uh they're going on the road where you can get tickets follow them on social media facebook twitter instagram tiktok youtube videos um stream their music buy their music download their music where you can find those contracts and where you can buy some merch Description of the podcast where it says find in fear online. Everything is there. Also, make sure you're fo- you know following the Corporate Progression podcast. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for your viewing pleasure. You can also watch the podcast videos on YouTube. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to your favorite audio streaming platform, Spotify, Podcast, iRadio, Amazon, and wherever you else might be getting this podcast. Um, if you are subscribed already, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're subscribing now, also thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're not subscribed, you're like, nah, I don't want to subscribe. Please, 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 please start out 2023 right and subscribe. If not, I totally understand, though. You are welcome back to come back to the podcast anytime you feel like. Want to thank FNX Fitness for sponsoring this podcast. Remember, 20% off. Use the code CPP20 at checkoutfxfit.com. Uh, thank you once again, guys, in fear. And a little teaser for you guys. When it comes to that music that they were talking about releasing, we got an idea for another podcast once that's all done. So get ready, because In Fear is coming back, baby. So on that note, that's going to be from you guys. Here, to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am every single one. of the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all. Like,
Yeah.